Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash and the rest of the Arrowverse as a whole. Today we've got three separate topics that we're going to be bringing up. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so we are back with normal videos, hopefully every day or so, and we're going to be talking about a couple of topics here today. I'm going to be mainly talking about The Flash to start with, but also to do with Batwoman and what happened earlier this week, or last week as of right now, with John Diggle showing up. And then also we have a smaller topic that we're going to talk about at the end of the video that is interesting, but it's from a show that not everyone watches. So as you all know, The Flash has been off for quite a while now. Episode 5, Part 5 of Armageddon, ended in December and now we're nearing the end of January so we're actually coming up pretty close to The Flash's next episode. Now a lot of you guys keep on asking when is The Flash's next episode coming out? Well it's coming out March 9th on a Wednesday so it's changing nights for the first time in The Flash's history. Normally it's Tuesday nights however Superman Lois is on Tuesday in The Flash's time slot and Naomi is in Superman Lois's old time slot, which would have been after The Flash, and so it's gonna get Wednesday to itself, and it's coming out in just over six weeks, because today we are Monday, and it's coming out on a Wednesday, six weeks later, so six weeks and two days exactly, if we are to be precise. But the main thing we're going to be talking about in this video in regards to The Flash is when is that next trailer coming out? When are we gonna start seeing promotional material for episode six? As far as I'm aware, they only premiered the promo that released after episode 5 aired for episode 6, just after the episode, and it was solely on TV. Obviously, some people like TV promos uploaded online, you guys can see it, but I don't even remember if the CW posted the trailer. So, you can presume they're going to repost that trailer and use it as supposedly new marketing because they haven't used it. But there is also the possibility of a shorter promo playing on TV like they do because, you know, they're going to want to announce, yes, The Flash is back after its long break. So the fans are aware. But when exactly would something like that drop? So if I'm going to give a good bet, I would say it's probably like maybe two weeks towards it. So like in about four weeks from now, maybe a month because they tend to promote new seasons like at least a month before but when it comes to returning episodes of shows that are already running and have aired a couple of episodes of their season they don't tend to put as big of a pressure on it as they just want people to become aware of it returning pretty much like right before it airs so like in the week before like 100% in the last week leading up to episode 6 you'll be seeing lots of promo material. By that time, we'll have promo photos, which they tend to vary when they release them, but normally when normal episodes are airing, they will release them like a couple of days after like the trailer for the next episode has come out. Sometimes it's even before then. It really depends on the schedule of their marketing for each individual show. But I'm going to guess maybe a week before they're going to release some promo photos. They will obviously re-release that trailer on the CW and probably on their YouTube channel as well. And there is a potential for maybe a short new version with a couple of new scenes that weren't included in this trailer that we got after the episode aired. And then probably the night of they're going to release a sneak peek and maybe a couple of days before via like Entertainment Weekly or their other sources that they like to use like ET Now where they'll release sneak peek previews for snippets of the episode. And I guess there is also the chance that there are going to be a couple of interviews here and there as they try and amp up the marketing saying yes the Flash is back after such a long time. But that's my predictions about you know the marketing leading up to the Flash season 8 episode 6. But in regards to the episode, really looking forward to it, I'm sure you guys are. We're going to be linking to Armageddon and there is going to be big timeline changes, which you can presume some of it's going to be because of Barry altering the timeline and defeating Reverse Flash. And you have to remember Reverse Flash or Tom Kavanagh's version of Reverse Flash is in fact powerless right now and he is stuck in a cell. But that still gives potential for him to come back 
pretty soon because he is literally on Earth Prime and he's nearby and Barry can pay him visits and I'm sure he will pay him visits. I just don't know if it's going to be right away. But the episode is definitely interesting in regards to, you know, the timeline changes by Nora and Bart who are returning, so that's a big deal that they're returning. The last time we saw both of them was in the season finale of last season, and after that we didn't really get an explanation because we didn't see them on the screen again. However, there was the odd line being like, oh, Bart and Nora keep on zipping back and forth from the future and they keep on showing up and it's really nice for them but as teased in the trailer there is big repercussions to them time traveling so many times and being reckless but that about does it for my flash segment of this video let's move on to the next thing and this next thing is in regards to Batwoman so Batwoman aired an episode and it wasn't even directed by David Ramsey however David Ramsey does have an episode of Superman Lois coming up very soon where people have been theorizing, and myself too, that he is probably going to show up in a small cameo on the show because they are building towards his new spin-off show, Justice U, and I'm pretty sure by that point he is going to become officially Green Lantern or, you know, his own version of Green Lantern or the Arrowverse's version of Green Lantern, which is going to be very exciting and I really do hope that happens. But they are slowly, continually building this storyline up with him returning once again in Batwoman earlier this week. I don't know what happened specifically throughout the episode because I'm not up to date with Batwoman. However, I have watched the scene or the most important scene that John Diggle is in in that episode. And so in the scene, which will have screenshots up on the screen right here, that I'm sure many of you guys watched, Diggle goes to Luke Fox who gives him back his device or like his sort of capsule that he had you know that was the thing that he opened when he got the green glowing light on him at the end of Arrow and Crisis and it's revealed that Luke has been working on it and basically he isn't able to get the box open and he uses all the gadgets he has and even Argus gave Diggle the same line saying that they f absolutely failed to unbox it, there was no way, even using all their technology, that they were going to be able to open this alien box. And so, as the scene progresses, there is a couple of notable points that I wanted to bring up that I think are very relevant for what is going on with the Green Lantern storyline that they're setting up. And so, Luke mentions the fact that there is similar technology in the device that he's holding that Dickel gave him to a transmatter cube. That's how I understood it. It was a bit confusing, but that's roughly the gist. And basically he hints that it's not from here and that it's from outer space, which is quite obvious because remember when Diggle first found it, it was kind of like in the ground and you know, it was kind of like it crashed to earth and it found Diggle and it chose him just like a Green Lantern ring does. Because if you've seen the Green Lantern film, if you read the comics, you know how Green Lantern gets his ring. You know, no matter what version of Green Lantern it is, the ring always chooses the person, and it seems like Digger was chosen, and that's why it came to him, and he was able to open it before. However, this time, it's not opening for him. And so, obviously, Luke asks him, how did it open last time? And he says, you know, it just opened for me. It was there. I didn't have to do anything. And so, in this case, Luke realizes maybe the key is something else entirely and that it will only open when the time is right and if Diggle is deemed worthy once again because you have to remember that Diggle once rejected it before when he first got it but it seems now that he's clearly wanting to open the box again so is he ready? Well, it seems the box doesn't think he is ready because obviously it's not opening for him right now and you would presume it would if he is ready for the role However, this means that, you know, he's going to be showing up more because we're going to continue this storyline and see where it's actually going beyond just him becoming Green Lantern. Like, he's going to go step by step and kind of figure out exactly what's going on. And he's obviously got a good idea of what's happening, but he doesn't have the full picture. He is missing a lot of information. So I think this is definitely leading to some more cameos. There is a high chance that he shows up on Superman Lois this week because I believe he is directing episode three, which is coming out on Tuesday, so tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that and don't miss my video when Superman Lois comes out because we're going to be posting my review. 
very excited about that. But probably sometime later on down the line this season, he's going to return on some of the other shows. He's actually struck a deal with Berlanti Productions and Warner Brothers to continue directing lots of episodes with them. And so this means that he's going to be present on lots of shows. And that means he's probably going to have time to film a cameo here or there because he's clearly wanting to make space and make time for this because it is an extra thing for him to do. And I don't know how much more money they're going to pay him on top of it. I think it's just like a storyline that he's interested in. And my theory is that it leads into Justice U. And that's something he's clearly extremely passionate about. Because when they announced the new show, which is technically an hour spin-off considering that Diggle is leading the show. It was announced that he is in talks to direct that episode and most likely he is going to be one of the key creative forces behind the show because of all of his ideas and clearly they really like him and he's been doing a very good job with his episodes. But we'll have to see when the time is right that Green Lantern happens or if it maybe never happens that is always a chance. Don't get your hopes up too much. But by the way that everything is looking and has looked over, you know, the past year or so, they are definitely leading towards something big like him becoming someone else and accepting this kind of bigger spot in the universe where he's going to have to leave his home. That was a big thing that he talked about in his past cameos, how he rejected it because he wanted to stay with his family. And now it seems something has changed with inside of him where he's curious about what he was offered and it seems maybe he wants to accept it so has he talked to Lila has he talked to his kid and figured stuff out will he actually go off will he just go for a brief period of time and then return and you know do the justice you stuff that we've been teased with but in the meantime he's become extremely powerful and better than ever we'll have to wait and see but i'm really looking forward to seeing his new episode of superman lois later this week okay so the final topic that we have is in regards to legends of tomorrow now i am very behind on legends because i haven't really liked the kind of comedic tone it's taken during the last few seasons but when something like this happens when someone like diggle shows up or matt letcher's reverse flash which is a big deal because he hasn't returned in a long time and they've been heavy on the Tom Cavanaugh reverse flash recently, it's a big deal. And I know that I'm late to the news, however I wanted to briefly bring it up in a video and I didn't think it constituted like one whole video to itself considering how late I am on this, but it's in the new episode titled Rage Against the Machines. They have released a synopsis and promo photos. Let's first read the synopsis, so it goes like this. With the help of Eobard Thorn, guest star Matt Letcher, the legends break a fixed point, creating an aberration that will attract the evil Wave Rider. The legends are soon shocked at who has been hunting them, and Sarah tries to negotiate which doesn't go as planned. Seemingly out of options, Gwyn rises to the occasion by using his military experience and hatches a stealth plan. I'm not going to read out the rest of the synopsis because I have no idea what is going on, like Gideon's showing up and I don't know, this new version of Matt Ryan. <laughs> so weird. Man, I miss Constantine. But anyway, back to my main point. Matt Letcher is showing up, he's going to be helping the legends break out of a fixed point, which will create an aberration, which will attract the evil wave rider. So he's going to be helping the legends and obviously Matt Letcher, originally a Flash character, actor, and you know, one of the main reverse flashes. In the last couple of seasons, it hasn't really been that. I would argue the last time that he was a big deal was in season two with Flashpoint because he did have a huge role in that. But more recently, they've really taken a liking to Tom Cavanaugh's original reverse flash, especially since Tom has left the show and it seems he is more than willing to come back to play reverse flash. And he had a big story, like he was the reason that Armageddon was happening and, you know, the reason why Despero was trying to stop Barry to stop Armageddon happening in the future. And it was all manipulated by Reverse Flash, so he had a huge role and it was very, very exciting. However, I have to say, it is nice to have Matt Letcher back because he is a core part of Reverse Flash and what made that character so great in Season 1 and also Season 2. So very excited about all of this. What do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments below. In regards to all the topics we talked today, when do you think the Flash trailer is going to come out? 
and when do you think they're going to sort of amp up their marketing and also what do you make of Green Lantern and John Deagle and everything that happened in Batwoman in regards to the case not opening and all the lines that hinted towards Green Lantern happening and him basically having to open himself up and be ready to accept the challenge of being someone greater and you know having bigger responsibilities than just being a hero on earth but if you did enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new so you don't miss any videos and you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video but for now thank you guys so much for watching goodbye I see red.